Welcome to HeCast, the official podcast of He Changed It. As always, my name is Mike Chisholm. As always, I am extremely excited to be doing this. It is the highlight of my week to be having conversations with people talking about anything to do with wellness. Um, and uh, today is going to be a very cool conversation um, about HR, professional stuff. And I'm super, super excited about it. Before we get going, thank you for all of those who have already downloaded the He Changed It app. Things are going really well. We are hundreds of percent. I don't know the analytics of this shit very, very well at all, but I do know that I keep hearing good things. We're hundreds of percent uh, when it comes to people using the app, hundreds of percent up when it comes to the downloading of the app. We're very grateful for that. Thank you so much for being a part of that. If you haven't downloaded He Changed It yet, give it a whirl. It's in both the Apple the Apple Store and the Google Play Store. And uh, if you like this podcast, if you've been listening, why not subscribe? Why not share it? We appreciate the support. Today, I have a very awesome guest. In fact, this is somebody who I can say has been someone that I have just considered my favorite conversationalist um, for decades. Uh, somebody, when I got into my first real adult job, um, who was a boss and a mentor to me, and I'm really grateful that through the years after she left that uh, large employer who I was a part of, um, her, her path and my path have crossed and every single time it's happened uh, has been a, a joy to me. I, I'm just, I love Terry so, so much and I'm so grateful that we can talk today. Um, Terry Bins has a HR service, uh, a company dedicated to helping people when it comes to human resources. And I can't wait to get into some things with her today. Uh, one of the most brilliant women I've ever met, um, one of the most impressive people I've ever met. And I'm so excited to actually have one of our conversations on, uh, on camera being recorded and being able to be thrown out there to the masses to enjoy as well. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Terry Benz. Thank you so much for being part of HeCast. Mike, so excited to be here. Very proud of you and the work that He Changes doing. Aww. Downloaded the app. Aww. Love it. Love the spark. You love the spark? Yeah. I the do. lyrics thing, man. That's, yeah. Yeah, they got some cool plans with that. Um, they got some limited edition t-shirts and things like that with right. the with the spark. So yeah, the spark feature in the app is super, super cool. Uh, if you have a lyric that you've uh, enjoyed or that has touched you, uh, check out the spark section and uh, submit that in. And we're going to be doing some very, very cool things with that. Awesome. Um, I am. Uh, you're still a Batman fan? Absolutely, I am. I'll tell you this, when we worked for, uh, we worked for a very large company together mm -hmm. for a while, um, gigantic company, Fortune 100, maybe even Fortune 50 company. And um, I'll tell you this, one of my first impressions of you was you had a Batman tattoo. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this gal is rad. Um, committed. Yeah, committed. So you still love the <laughs> yeah, Batman? of course I do. <laughs> Of course I do. Um, since you have moved on, you've got you've had a, a varied experience being an employee and being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, I want to focus on the entrepreneur part of what it is that you do, uh, because I think that there are a lot of people who need to do some catch up in the world of, of, of HR. Mm -hmm. One time I was on a plane. Um, there was a time in the mid 2000s where I considered moving to Dubai. And uh, the reason that happened was because I was on an airplane with a gentleman who was just coming back from Dubai. And he was telling me, uh, he was a Canadian, and he, I don't know if he was a, if he was a, a contractor or was working for a company, but he was, he was in the HR field. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay, so human resources. And I thought about, you know, the person who uh, onboards and offboards people at a company, that kind of a thing. And I said, oh, okay, that's interesting that you do that. So you're like the, the payroll person for mm. something right. out in the Middle East. Right. And he kind of looked at me and he said, no, 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 no. HR is one of the biggest, uh, most robust uh, fields that is growing when it comes to business and uh, corporate, not just corporate Canada or the corporate US, but the corporate world. HR is massive. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite Wayne Gretzky quote is, uh, don't go where the puck is, you go where the puck is going. Mm -hmm. um, when you left this, this major employer, you kind of hyper-focused yourself into the world of HR for a while. So first off, would you agree with that statement that HR is this, it's a lot bigger than a lot of people would think? At the end of the day, it's people that make the world go round. It's people that run the business. So HR is a very much a big part of the success of an organization. You need the people. So you need a people person or someone who's a professional in that field. So absolutely. Is that what yeah. HR is? Like HR, human resources. Like, like why is it such a, a, um, a growing industry? 
Mm -hmm. So if you think about uh, how vast it is, so typically people go, oh, they're on borders, off borders. Sure. They hire and they fire. Yeah. It's actually a much bigger scope of roles. So uh, you can look at all the principles from recruitment, retention, compensation, payroll, uh, leadership development, which is a big focus in all the big companies right now, is how do we grow our people and their skills, mm -hmm. right? And then the employer relations piece, which is where your HR person, person should be your coach in the organization. Okay. Um, that last thing that you just said is mm -hmm. a, um, I think it's a pretty big piece that many people wouldn't necessarily consider. Um, and I, I know we're going to go down that path for sure. Um, the uh, the other part of HR that I just I'm in the I'm in the money business you know and, and part of uh, my financial firm what we do is benefits and yeah. things like that mm -hmm. uh, the company that I used to work for the HR person was actually kind of an armchair financial advisor in some ways too because they were really responsible for um, you know like the uh, the medical benefits things like that pension benefits all sorts of stuff so there's there's a lot of arms when it comes to HR. Yes, right. So when you look at it under the umbrella of compensation, most people think it's just about the money, but right. it's all that entire piece. So from your benefits and, you know, what's the ROI to the company if they're going to offer these benefits, et cetera, pensions, et cetera, what's the ROI? Right. Well, the piece of that is retention. And so when retention is talked about, it's like, I want to keep those high performers. That's how you keep the people in your company is all those pieces around. Right the employment experience and compensation. So, yeah. There's a lot of small business owners out there who, mm. I mean, you know, they're hiring four or five staff and, and that's, a, that's a big thing. Like you say, the turnover is the thing that can cost businesses uh, the most sometimes, you yes. know, you, you, you bust your ass to, to try and, and train somebody and get them to be an expert in whatever job or field is for that company as an mm. asset to that company. Mm. You want to keep that person, mm. um, you know, for a small business, yeah. they don't necessarily have the, um, the ability or the know-how or even the, the the wherewithal to understand how powerful HR can be for them or um, uh, what a detriment it can be if they have a, if they're lacking in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. You should say that. So the company that I work for now uh, is a small company and I've worked the whole corporate field. Yeah. That's you where have. I've always been. Right. Yes. And then when this position came along for a little company, they hadn't had an HR person. So they didn't know what they didn't know. Right. And also what I found is the managers were trying to manage situations mm -hmm. they had no skill in. Mm -hmm. And how, uh, what are some of the pitfalls of that? Like, okay, so they're trying to manage a situation that they had no skill in. Uh, what are some of the, uh, the things that can come up that could cause uh, disharmony in the business? Yeah. So um, once you have somebody in your environment who's disengaged, yeah. they cost you way more than financially. Morale in the company goes down. Everybody decides, I'm going to set my standard down there where that guy is. You get conflict in the workplace. You get um, lost productivity. Those are the kinds of things that happen, you know, when you don't understand how HR can help you. When you look at the overall uh, employment experience, people want to stay where it's a happy environment as well. Mm -hmm. So you can actually lose people, the good ones, if you don't learn to address the problem problem children in the environment. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things you said is um, what HR can do for you. So let's let's dive into that a little bit. What are some of the sure. things that HR can do for you? Mm -hmm. So I'll just um, run some examples yeah. for, you, for you. So when I joined this company, there was incredible disengagement. I would go to the sites and they would be like anti-management, anti-benefits, anti-everything. And they had no avenue on how to share what they were feeling. So I ran an employee survey. Again, this company didn't know what that was, right. what it looked like, yeah. and what they could glean from it. And when we first ran it, we had 15 pages of verbatim. Wow. Yeah. So a lot so of So they apathy. were really not happy with the way the company was being run. Okay. And so we were able to take that, extrapolate it, and start to do some really good work in the company and start to get more connected to the employees and give them what they needed. What are some of the things that employees need at that point? Like, is this is this where division sometimes comes in between um, the labor and management? And this is where like unions pop up and all of these things. Is mm -hmm. it to address this kind of uh, this kind of disconnect? Absolutely. That's what absolutely it is. And you'll find some of the bigger companies like the one that you and I worked for. Yeah. Um, they've been able to keep the union out. Yes. And a piece of that or a tool for that is to get that employee survey out there and actually hear what they're saying in such a way that they uh, feel the uh, comfortable to do so, so it's anonymous. Mm -hmm. And then for the management group to take that feedback and actually address it and work on it. That's interesting. Now, um, 
Would you consider that role, like the person who's working in the HR position for a company, is that person considered management in your opinion, or is that person considered, um, uh, you know, labor or, or as, 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 you know, for lack of a better term, I don't mean to demean anything, um, you know, a worker bee, or is that person kind of the arbitrator in the middle, the referee? Like any profession, yep. um, you have to figure out what your own philosophy is. Okay. My philosophy is um, I'm a business partner. Yeah. So at times I'm going to have to put on that business partner hat and I'm going to have to help the organization make a decision that impacts the employees. Right. Then the other times I'm going to have to put on that hat to be the employee advocate. Right. Because management isn't doing the right thing. So that's my philosophy. I walk down that center line. However, at the end of the day, let's be honest, I'm management. Okay. Okay, so you're looking for the best interest of everybody. Yes, absolutely. If you're a good HR person, that's yeah. what you're doing. I mean, that's part of our code of ethics around our, our certification as well. You know, we've got to be fair. Yeah. yeah. What, what's the certification called? Um, certified Human Resources Professional. Okay. It's a Canadian designation. Yeah, is it Canadian, I was going to ask, yeah, Canadian and U.S.? Is that, no, uh, no, the U.S. has a different one. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's still a bunch of cowboys and cowgirls down there that just, uh, there's well, no regulation to it? or is Well, it because we have more more federal laws that cover, this, cover the provinces, right. right? Where down there, th their states are governed differently. They have at-will terminations. We don't have at-will terminations. So our federal laws, the code of uh, labor code, takes care of all the provinces to protect the employee right. much more than in the U.S., Okay. Mm -hmm. But that being said, uh, the philosophy of the role uh -huh. is the same no matter where you are on the, in the, on the borders. Like, like you, if be. you're trying to yeah, build absolutely. a company, yes. if you're trying to build a business, um, HR is a huge part of it. Yeah. One that many people um, disregard or don't even realize are ignorant maybe a little bit towards it. Well, th there's this, mm, and I'm sure lots of you listeners will feel this way. Hmm. HR, they're only around to terminate people. Okay. And that's a hard barrier to break through. And at the end of the day, if I could say anything to your listeners, here's what I know is HR doesn't fire anyone. Management does. Okay. If you look at your termination letter, it's never our name on it. It's not an HR. It's a manager's decision. We work with the managers around performance issues. And at times when layoffs happen, you know, again, exiting people or terminating people, but they terminate people. We don't. I gotcha. So if I can get anything again to your, to your listeners is do not be afraid of HR. Right. We have multi hats that we wear and we're here for you. I appreciate that. Um, I want to get into what it is that you do. So you work for a company, but you also have a company yes. yourself. Yes. And, and it specializes exactly in this. Yeah. Um, would you say that your company, you're an advocate for, for people who don't necessarily know the ins and outs of HR? That's exactly what we are. We're okay. HR for the people. HR for the people. I like that. <laughs> so what we find is that um, you'll be in situations at work and you won't have anybody there you feel you can trust to mm -hmm. help you navigate. So our company, what our company does is we give you that support. We understand the inside workings and, of course, the outside workings. So we'll be able to help you navigate whatever issue that you're having at work, whether it's performance issues, mental health issues. My, my employer terminated me. What do I do now? My employer wrote me up. How, you know, what mm -hmm. do I do now? Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things. So if you're not comfortable going to that HR person in your organization, we're your HR person outside of the organization. So somebody's in a situation at work that they're not, um, they're not pleased with. They feel like they've been um, mistreated, mm -hmm. uh, maybe unjustly treated. Mm -hmm. um, they can come to you and they can say, hey, I need a consultant to kind of look over the situation here and give me a, a third set of eyes um, so I don't feel like I'm going crazy. Am I in the right? Am I in the wrong? Yeah. Who isn't a lawyer? That's right. Okay. That's the biggest thing with us is yeah. we're not lawyers. You can go and take your letter, performance letter to an employment lawyer. That's going to cost you 500 bucks and it it may not go, go nowhere. Chances are he's going to say, come on in, right? Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll do this again for you for another $500. So we're way inexpensive that way. Okay. So we're not legal, we're not employment lawyers, and we say that straight up, Yes. but we are coaches and we understand the inner workings of companies as well as all the legislation attached to the employment relationship. And you know the rights like the back of your hand. Absolutely. Okay. So um, while we're here right now, mm -hmm. give it a plug. We'll plug it at the end too. But if somebody's out there going, holy shit, this is, that's, that's, that's me. I'm, 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 I'm getting screwed with my pants on at work. How can I, uh, how, <laughs> okay. how, how can they reach out to you? You can, you can visit us on Instagram. Okay. 
HR for the People on Instagram, or you can visit our website, hrftp.ca. hrftpa.ca. HR for the People. First 15 minutes is free. (laughs) Reach out. We'll have a conversation. See if we can help you. Uh, That's super cool. What, what, without uh, obviously confidentiality is massive for you. Mm -hmm. And and, and so I'm not not asking for any specific situations, more like general. Um, What are some of the people? who reach out to you, is there a common, is there one that's more, um, more of an issue multiple times than other ones, or is it kind of a potpourri? It's a potpourri. Uh, they tend to reach out though, after the termination has happened. Okay. On the way to that termination is probably when they should have reached out to us. I've been having coaching conversations with my boss. He wrote me up three times and now he's terminated me. If he had gotten us involved in the process of earlier on, we could have maybe helped you navigate so you didn't end up in that place where you were terminated. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, our culture has shifted a lot in the last mm-hmm. 25 years. Uh, sure. When I worked with you, it was 25 years ago, 26 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about corporate culture back then versus corporate culture now. And, and the shift that we have seen in our lifetimes has mm-hmm. been nothing short of, of monumental. It's been a crazy shift okay. in, in what the workplace was like back then versus what the workplace is like right now. Um, what's the biggest shift that you have seen um, as all this regulation has, has sort of uh, birthed over that time? Sure. So I was just having a conversation with one of our coworkers this morning around this, and we were talking about those times. And if I look back on those times, we were lawless. Yeah. Management was lawless. Yeah. Chances are, if we had done any of those things, and we collectively, because I was part of that team, and right, sure. if we had done any of those things nowadays, we would not have jobs. Right. So some of it was just like absolutely unforgivable. So what's happened over time is there's been an awareness around respect in the workplace. Mm-hmm. We, we've always had the laws around um, uh, occupational health and health and safety. Sure. So then we've always protected people from a physical perspective. Yeah, like right? a compensation, That's, workman's compensation, well, well, no, like from that. a physical perspective. So there's yeah. always been those rules around PPE yeah. and, you know, work safely and yeah. don't work alone. So those things have always been in place. But the shift now has become more psychological, more of an awareness on how we treat each other and what that relationship looks like. And some of the things that recently that have brought it to the forefront have, has been the Me Too movement. Yes. Monumental. Yes. Crazy. And I think, you know, and, and I th- it's got to be tough to be a man today. That's what I got to say about that in the workplace. Because those lines are so blurry at times. Yeah. On your relationship with your with your female employees. Well, and, and part of the genesis of, of He Changed It. When Candace, yes. and, Candace and Shannon uh, built this company, um, it is, it's, it's because of that. It's because of, you know, what was okay 20 years ago, literally was okay. And, and now Lawless. it's like you say, unforgivable. Mm-hmm. And, and it's interesting hearing your perspective on this from a, um, from a business standpoint, because um, I mean, it's one thing for, we talk about, we had a lot of people on this podcast who are uh, athletes, coaches, former athletes, and they talk about the, the idea of locker room talk. Mm-hmm. Well, there's also lunchroom talk mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and what was appropriate back then, or, or maybe not even appropriate. That's not even the right word. What was um, acceptable yeah. back then, what yeah. was commonplace back yeah. then, isn't necessarily that now. Yeah. Um, and there's growing pains with that. There's people who fall through the cracks and and I just, I look at what you're doing and I think, okay, well, there's never been a, a, a more important time to have people who are willing to be that third set of eyes for people because there are people who are getting the bum steer sometimes too. They're literally doing what they have always done, not realizing the shift that's happening around them and not being given the coaching to um, adjust and evolve. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. True. And- more, more often than not, people are afraid to stand up and say, I'm being harassed on either side. Sure. Because men get harassed just the same. Absolutely. I think about um, bullying in the workplace. Men are less likely to stand up and say, hey, I'm being bullied. That's just not part of, the, of who they are. Yeah. It's happening, though, all over the place. So that shift, you know, it's there, yes, but it still needs to continue. Let's talk about the bullying thing for a second, because I sure. think that's a huge one. Um, you know, you've got somebody, and I want to talk about honesty in the workplace as well, and mm-hmm. ethics, the ethics mm-hmm. uh, behind this as well. I think um, I think when the flashlight shines uh, in a room that has been abandoned for a while, or a crawl space that's been abandoned for a while, you see a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. And 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 that um, that's kind of the, the, the most horrible moment, is when the light first shines on it, and, and you got to realize how much stuff needs to be cleaned up. Um, 
as this light has shone on behaviors in the workplace and how to treat people and um, what advice would you have for somebody, a man who's at, you know, men are synonymous with, 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 with pushing things down. You know, we keep saying that he changed it. Um, we're trying to take back the phrase man up mm -hmm. and, and manning up is not the traditional um, idea of what manning up is and say athletics or, or, or whatever you want to call it, that testosterone right. filled idea of just, Hey, man up, don't cry. Don't do that. No, manning up is actually taking responsibility for the stuff that's going on. And if you have to stand up and, 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 and shine a flashlight on a corner like that, do it. Mm -hmm. You know, so when it comes to bullying, if somebody, if a man isn't being treated right by coworkers and there's a bit of a gang mentality, things like that, what advice would you have for somebody like that who, mm -hmm. who's feeling that way, but doesn't really know what to do? Mm -hmm. So when I look at survival in the workplace, I look at two things, courage and grit. Okay. So courage in many forms, mm -hmm. whether it be having that tough conversation, standing up for that person. Showing compassion when others don't. Mm -hmm. Courage, right? Stand up. Grit, don't let it go. Grit is all about tenacity. If you see it happening, what you permit, you promote. Mm -hmm. So stop, get in front of it. Help that guy, help your fellow worker, whether they be on your team or not on your team. Mm -hmm. But have the courage to stand up and say, it's, it, this isn't right, it shouldn't be happening. Most companies, larger ones especially, um, have policies that can help you with that. Yeah. So go and ask, where is the violence prevention workplace policy? Mm -hmm. That's your first step. Where is it on paper? The company says, this is wrong and we need to address it. Mm -hmm. That would be the first step. I think that there is a lot of, um, you know, we think about the company that we worked for, which is a large, gigantic company. Um, and then there are smaller companies who may not even have, still may not even have these types of things. There are regulatory standards as well. Province, state, country, whatever it is, right? And if you don't have one as, as a small employer, WorkSafe BC is a plethora of information. Yeah. They'll, they have all, everything you need to build that policy. Yeah. But equally for the person that's being bullied, or harassed, it's all there and works safe. The um, all companies are required to have those policies. Okay. They may okay. not have them in place. That's where I'm. That's where I'm they going. They may not have yeah. them in place, but they are required to. So you can just go to the website as an employer or an employee. You can bring up a, a, um, all the pieces of, of a, a policy that you need. They'll help you build it right there. Very cool. Um, let's talk about ethics in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. from an HR perspective. Um, you know, you, you talked about the violence thing. You talked about uh, safety. Those are those are uh, kind of all in one. That's a physical harm kind of mm -hmm. realm of, mm -hmm. of, of what a workplace can be. But then we've got the, um, the side that's inside the head, you know, words that are spoken, um, emotions that are uh, that are, you know, gossip and things like that. And, and when it comes, that's got to be something that with social media and all of these things mm -hmm. that have kind of risen in the last decade or, or two, uh, that's gotta be something that I would think has really evolved in the HR world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ethics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a couple of things you touched on there. Um, social media is a monster with unto itself and it's, uh, often people will emote through social media mm -hmm. and then regret it. Mm -hmm. Back to the ethics part. <laughs> We all know what's right and what's wrong. So if there's something going on in the workplace, if someone's being treated in a particular way, you know it's wrong. And you know, find that courage. Yeah. And say it, it's not, it's not right. So I'll have those conversations with the management in the background too. Certainly around mental health, um, dealing with uh, um, an issue right now. Uh, this gentleman, he's been, we know he's had a mental health issue for the last five years, okay. but he will not share. If you don't share what's going on, then all the managers can do is manage the behaviors. If they manage the behaviors, you can find yourself down a path of discipline and eventually termination. When people are experiencing a mental health crisis, the behaviors that come out typically are not normal. Mm -hmm. Back to the ethics. Mm -hmm. In the back room, the managers go, that guy's a loony and he's losing it. Right. He's crazy. Right. And I have to stop the conversation and say, no, there's something going on here. From a medical perspective, you may think that, but you're not allowed to say that. 
and certainly not in front of me. Right. We're going to help this individual break through and share with us. It took him five years to tell us that he had a mental health illness. In the meantime, he's been in conflict. He's been, uh, we've managed him, his performance. We've suspended him because he didn't have the courage to say, I'm not well mm. mentally. I think that that is something um, when it comes to men, especially um, being able to admit that uh, being able to be even become aware of that sometimes might not even be, it might not even occur that, um, I mean, you know, we've all been through breakups. We've all been through um, times in our lives that are, that, that are really considered, you know, we're in hot water. There've yeah. been some struggles. There've been some, some, you know, uh, water coming over the side of the boat. Um, and, Physically, if we're okay and we're still just kind of powering through it, that is kind of the measuring stick that many times we'll use for if I'm okay or not. Right. And the idea of there being something wrong up here, and, and, and we always talk about the physical, the idea of uh, I have a cold, I have the flu, whatever. Right. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a temporary physical um, impediment. There are temporary mental impediments too, but we don't talk about those things mm -hmm. enough. What advice would you have for, um, first off, I guess there's two questions on this one here because you you, the, you straddle a very cool line. You've got both sides. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you have for employers when it comes to this kind of a thing? Because like you say, if the behavior suddenly changes, right, there is, you can look at it 2D and say, well, I'm just going to talk about this behavior. But the 3D version of that is, okay, this person who may have worked here for X amount of time who never exhibited these things is now exhibiting things. And we think there might be a mental health issue here. Mm -hmm. So is there advice for those? And then is there advice for people who are on the other side going, oh, well, hey, you know what? They're just becoming aware. Oh, maybe I got something wrong up here. Maybe I do have a cold up here or a flu up here that needs uh, some tending. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are some advice for those, uh -huh. for those parties? So back to courage, right? Yeah. Yeah. So as an employer, if you see something and it's not right, sit down with that employee. Yes. And call it out. Legally, are they allowed to do that? Yeah. The behavior they can. Look at you seem like you're 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 struggling today. Right. You're having conflict with your friends or your work coworkers, or or you seem withdrawn today. Is there something going on? How can I help? Right. Most powerful wor words in the world is how can I help? Right. But you call out the behaviors. Is there something going on at home you want to share with me? Because I see that your absenteeism has gone up. Mm -hmm. I see that you've disengaged with us. You're not chatting with us today. How are you feeling? Right. Right? Um, Canadian Mental Health Association has a great uh, um, employer workshop you can purchase called um, Not Myself Today. Oh, Okay. So it will, this works, this little workshop that you have is, um, it comes, everything comes to you, the posters, the, the dialogue, um, little buttons, um, so that you can actually bring that out into the workplace. So when you're not feeling yourself today, you, you just say it. And so the employer should build that safe space, mm -hmm. but don't be afraid to call out those behaviors, especially if they're abnormal. Right. And you're yeah. like, something going on here. Mike, you're not yourself today. Yeah. So I get that every day, <laughs> <laughs> you know, how can we help? And managers, so, especially the ones that the frontline supervisors are the ones that have to do that work. And it's so easy to get caught up in the business and caught up in the work, et cetera. Right. But, and then just miss that the guy beside you's not doing so well today. Take him somewhere private, sit him down, have a conversation with him, open up the dialogue. And that's legal. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah okay. Absolutely. And I think that that's a, that's great food for thought for the employer. Um, if, if I hear you right, what I'm hearing is if you're an owner of a company, if you're, you're one of these employers of a smaller business, whatever, um, do you have resources? Mm -hmm. And if I'm hearing you correctly is you are a plethora of knowledge of, yeah, resources are available. You can grab them. It's not like you're going to be spending your entire month's payroll uh, to do that or, or your uh, entire month's profit to do that. You can very easily create resources within your workplace for such situations. Yep. And uh, if you look at the Canadian Mental Health Association website, yes. they also offer two-day training, 24 hours training in mental health first aid for anybody. Wow. For $75. Yeah. That's, so there's really yeah. no reason no. not to at least start there as a base as an employer to say my frontline supervisors are going to do this. At minimum, they're going to do this. Right. It cost me two days worth of pay, 24 hours, and $75. Yeah. It's just going to change the culture in your workplace. It's going to, and if it, if it helps one person, 
one person it's paid for itself right? those guys are awesome i mean they're right now behind yeah. the scenes um you know we're i don't know how long it's going to be until um until this thing shows up but right now we're they're building a course for he changed it Brilliant. that's going to be it's a click through course that's going to be added exclusively on he changed it you want to be able to get it at the canadian mental health um website it's it's those guys are awesome those guys and gals are, are mm-hmm. phenomenal with what they do right and um i think that many times i think the reason why they want to partner with us is because many times men don't go to that website and, and, and it's, it's, I don't know if it's that bravado thing, that testosterone thing, that ego thing, but the idea of the old definition of man up, I'm not sure what that is. So that's where we're going to move to the other side of it. Um, when you're the, when you're that person that's kind of in the box and I sort of asked it before, but like what, um, oh man, it's hard to even, uh, articulate what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to bring out here. And I want to, cause it's so important. There's a lot of guys who are trapped. Sure. There's a lot of guys who are trapped. Um, they feel that the power over them is too much. They're not in a position where a union would even be part of the equation whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're on a crew of eight people or something like that. Or it's mm-hmm. just, mm-hmm. it's just one of those things where it's, it's really, really, the pressure is, is, is stifling. Um, maybe they've got a drive to, we just, uh, you and I have a, a, a former coworker who just passed away, mm-hmm. um, you know, this last week. And it's like, this is a guy who for 30 years worked for this company. All he did was his, he was tunnel visioned and he, he was, you know, he was his governor. Yeah. He didn't have a governor. Didn't he was one. running a hundred. I agree. I agree. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I just, there are guys out there who are feeling that way and their work life is what's creating that firestorm of, of, of emotion that they're just stifling down. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that is such a, I mean, you have an HR company, mm-hmm. but the people who reach out to you sometimes do reach out, I would think from places of desperation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stress is an interesting thing. Mm. And it, sometimes it takes uh, like something monumental for you to become aware of it. Like a heart attack or a, like a, yeah. A lose a spouse. Yep. Break up. Yep. Something happens, right? Yep. And so we trot along in sometimes this fast motion without yep. slowing down. So for those people, especially men, we understand the pressure's on you and COVID didn't help. There's a whole plethora of men out there worried about their job tomorrow. That combined with family pressures, et cetera, lots going on there. Yeah. I'm a fan of timeout. What that what I mean by that yeah. is exactly that. Timeout. Throw away your phone. Leave, leave the house, whether it be 20 minutes a day. Timeout. Sit with yourself. Become aware of your emotions, where you're at. Mm. 20 minutes a day. That's all it takes. It will change you. But you've got to do it. It's got to be purposeful. So you've got to say to yourself, I'm going to take 20 minutes a day for me. So what does that mean? 20 minutes a day? Like, like, okay, so you go and you find a quiet bench to go sit on. Or, or, or motion causes emotion. If you come across someone who seems to be struggling, um, who's having a bad day, the first thing you're going to do is take them for a walk. Motion causes emotion. Yes. And it will change the emotion. So if you're sitting at your desk and you're all stressed, et cetera, get away from your desk, go for a walk, 20 minutes. Motion causes emotion. You'll come back a completely different person. Same with, you know, especially the entrepreneurs and the people that are running their own businesses, et cetera. They think, I don't have any time of the day. I don't have 20 minutes of my day. Yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah. But it has to be purposeful. So you have to actually say to yourself, I do, I say this to my managers all the time. Cause they're like, I don't have any time to do that. I'm like, okay, well, let me show you how you get time. Sit down with them at their laptops. Open your calendar. Open your calendar. All right. See that block right there, that half an hour? I want you to block it off right now. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? I block it off. I can Yes, you can. Block it off and invite me. And at that half an hour mark where it comes up, it comes up, it comes up on my computer and I call them. Time to go for a walk. Time to take that 20 minutes. What's scheduled, what gets scheduled gets done. That's right. the other piece. Yeah. And I think that we live in this world right now where we get overwhelmed so easily. And it's very, um, it's very easy for us to jump to the hyperbolist to, to, to be like, oh, I got no time. Well, I got no anything. I'm so overwhelmed. I got no, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then, yeah. um, you know, really at the end of the day, yeah, if you have a scheduler that you use for, for, for things like that, you can find, we actually have fucking lots of time. Sure we do. We got lots of time. Sure we do. Uh, whether it's before a shift, after a shift, whether it's, uh, you know, in the middle of the shift, whatever it is, we actually do have lots of time. 
that we can take to do this. It's uh, it's a matter of being purposeful with it. And I think the only way you can be purposeful is, is, is to be aware. And I really appreciate this conversation because there are people out there, I think, who just have this tunnel vision where they've just been uh, wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat, <laughs> wash, rinse, repeat. Wow. And they haven't popped their head up mm-hmm. to become aware of some of these things. Or maybe they mm-hmm. see it in other people. But they don't see it in themselves. Uh, maybe they see it in other people and they're worried about them. Um, I think that's another one, too. Like when you got somebody who is um, the same coworker, mm-hmm. I'll flat out tell you this. I was worried about this guy for years. Uh. I was worried about him and I, I Mm -hmm. did it a couple times, you know, kind of nudge management saying, Hey, I think there's some mental stuff here. I think there's this, I wish I could have done more. Honestly, I don't know what I could have done if I could have done any more. Um, but I wanted to do more. I can, Mm -hmm. I can articulate that now that he's gone and I've been having a few Mm -hmm. days to kind of shift and and, and talk about, uh, think about this a little bit. I wish I could have done more. I don't know what I could have done. And I think there's other people out there who see that too. Like they see their coworkers who are cracking right beside them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and th- that awareness is just such an important thing. Call it out. Yeah. Just call it out. Look, you're, I can see there's something going on here. How can I help? Most powerful w- words out there. Yeah. How can I help? And that's that courage and that grit you were talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. At times, sometimes we want to, at times we often go, you should do this. You should do that. Well, that's the biggest blocker in the whole world. No one hears people you. should all over somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I right? hate being shitted on. Yeah, that's it. Right. <laughs> don't, don't like, right. You're not going to get anywhere versus right. how can I help? Right. The question part of it where you give it to them yeah. as opposed to you direct them. Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's monumental. Yes. The difference between those two things. Yes. Because in, in somebody's mind, the outcome might be identical. You know, I want this person to have some sort of help, yep. but directing them for that help rather than trying to just, get them into a place where they're talking about it, where it can maybe lead to that place. Those are two very, very different things. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's a lot of coaches out there. Um, I have a coaching certificate as well. So the questions that are most helpful are, you know, how can I help? And then if someone starts to tell you a story and that they're just unloading on you, the next question that is really easy. What's one thing you could do today to take away that stress? Mm. Just one thing. I don't know. I don't know. Can I suggest something? Let's go for a walk. Mm-hmm. Just go for a walk. That permission thing is really cool. Yeah. You know, uh, can I suggest something yeah. where you're, you're you straight up are asking permission um, to to get a little deeper? Yes. You yes. know, because some people might say no to that, and 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 that's where that block pops back up again, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 but um, many times that that question I think can erase that block. Yes. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then so when you see someone cracking beside you, especially, there's that courage thing again, right? Absolutely. You know, and from a management perspective or supervisory perspective, you've got to stop for a minute and, and find that courage to have that conversation with that individual. Yeah. And say, look, I'm worried about you. How can I help? Um, I really appreciate you opening up the uh, the expertise box here and talking about some of these things. And, and I, um, I know it helps people. Um, if there's one other thing with HR that... Um, might be something that, that that doesn't come to the front of people's minds when they think of the term or, or, or something that's going on um, that you want to throw out there before we, I, I hate, I told you it was going to go by fast and it does, they go by so fast. Mm-hmm. Um, if there is one thing that you wanted to throw out there, is there anything that we haven't covered that you just want to tell the people, inform people about? I think the biggest thing is that HR, we're people too. Ask us how we're doing. Open the conversation there. Yeah, that's a, you're not just a robot. You're not just somebody who is processing data, things like that. You're just also paychecks, that person. All of those kinds of things. We're people too. So we experience stress, et cetera, the same way. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're here for you. And uh, we appreciate it when you reach out to us. Uh, Terry, I appreciate you for <laughs> taking, uh, letting me take advantage of our friendship a little bit here and mm-hmm. you coming in and talking about this. Uh, before we finish off, HR for the people. HR for the people.ca. HRFTP.ca. Find us on Instagram. Follow us. We're mm-hmm. here for you. 
Very cool. Uh, this won't be the last time we talk about this. As he grows and and, and builds and evolves, um, all of our partners and our friends who have uh, helped us along the way um, are going to get second, third, fourth shots doing this. We're going to add uh, integrate into the app all of our all of our friends, all the tools that can be um, accessed for people to. Um, to move into a better space in their life mm-hmm. and in a better direction of their life. Thank you for building, even though you, yeah, you're, you're the corporate gal and you can go <laughs> out and you can, you know, make the high powered money with the high powered uh, jobs and things like that. But you also have this other side of you that just wants to help people. And that's why you've got your company. And that's why you do what you do. And I just want to say thank you very much for doing what you do and uh, very grateful for you. Thank you, Mike. Awesome. They go by quick. There's another episode in the can. Again, thank you for all of those who uh, support what it is that we're doing here at HE. And I just uh, am so excited for the future of where we're going. We've got a couple of things coming down that are going to be very neat additions that I'm not going to disclose right now, but a lot of cool, cool things that are happening in the He Changed It universe. Thank you for being part of that. Please share, subscribe, uh, become part of the He Changed It community. The community right now is in its infancy in the app, and it's really fun watching that grow. Um, very cool to be on the ground floor of something, and that's where we still are with He Changed It. So why don't you come and join us? In the meantime, that's another episode of He Cast, the official podcast of He Changed It. My name is Mike Chisholm. Go change something.